The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? Ask me, Justin, how are Minneapolis audiences? And I tell them, Minneapolis audiences are the horniest audiences in the world. You're all so horny, it's a little overwhelming. Hello, my name is Justin McElroy, and welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. The first Justin was more of an MC. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Sure. And then I was walking myself into the character of Justin. You know McElroy. that's true because we are all just a character we play. That's so deep, Travis. And the character I'll be embodying this evening <laughs> is your middleest brother, Travis McElroy. And I'm your sweet baby brother in Thirty Under Thirty, media luminary, Griffin McElroy. I've, we, uh, we played a Travis show. did, I want that on the audio record, Travis did just shush Griffin's applause. He gave you a... I, I just thought it was, it was a little bit like y'all were just trying to make a point. Like, we like Griffin. Yeah, like, we okay. Get it. We, we did a show in Minneapolis like two years ago, and um, I'm remembering now the horniness. And I'm not saying this for applause, because when y'all were doing that thing you just did, uh, it, was, it was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So horny. Holy so, shit. Uh, what's up? We, like the Chilean miners, we've emerged from the <laughs> ground and returned to you, Minneapolis. I just think of everything we've done for the past few years as sort of like dead air between our two performances. In oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, definitely. It, I measure everything in how long it's been since Minneapolis. <laughs> we s- We're so happy to be in the Orpheum because this place is fucking beautiful. I said it. Did I say I said it? Yeah, the Orpheum. It's so beautiful. I thought I wanted to say Morpheus, but that's the that's not. fucking Matrix. We're in the Orpheum. Can we get the chandelier turned on? Because this place has the most buck wild chandelier I've ever. I don't know if you have the chandelier switch. Whoa, they broke it. My broke angel of music. Um, there it is. Look at it. So we were talking about it backstage, and here's the thing, y'all going to need you to help us steal that chandelier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going away. They're turning the lights off. Okay, Please don't fine. steal our chandelier. Please don't steal this chandelier. We're going to need someone who's good at gymnastics. We're going to need a hacker. We're going to need a face. We're going to need a face person. A person with a face, I guess. We're going to need someone who's not afraid to get in there and mix it up and scrap with people. We're going to need... A gun haver. A, a gun, gun haver. haver. We're going to need someone with a van. We're going to need someone to go get burgers. We're going to need someone to just say, like, hey, how's everybody doing? You guys doing okay? Do you need anything? Show of hands, has anybody in here ever stolen anything that's worth more than $100? Okay. All right. Wow, a lot of good people in the audience tonight. Uh, no, that, that balcony, that's see, full the, of crooks. The balcony's nasty. You all can't see it, but you balcony folks are nasty. Which is great. They're closer to the chandelier. Also need to say... Because uh, sometimes our fans take things very seriously. Please don't steal the chandelier. No, I d- I no do- you know what, Griffin? I'm sorry. If y'all can figure out no. how to get up there. No. no, we're not entreating you to steal a chandelier. Wink. They won't give us the, they won't give us the money for the show. They won't. Because they, they're like, you 
stole our chandelier, take it out of the chandelier sales. Finding a pawn shop big enough is the problem. Yeah. Because getting And ritzy there, enough. <laughs> yeah. You're going to find a, a fence with very specific needs. Can we all just eat a little bit of the chandelier? And oh, then no, they meet, are turning it off now. Back. Thank you, chandelier. Everybody, big hands for the chandelier. Uh, for our, so for as, our listeners at home, there's a very big, good chandelier in the room. And we're going to eat it. And we're, we're going to eat, eat it out. every last delicious crystalline bite. And we're going to steal the smaller chandeliers down here to give it to the big chandelier. <laughs> As tribute. As tribute or fuel. That's how they, <laughs> this one used to be small, and they kept feeding it small chandeliers, and it got so big. Uh, so you we're going to need to turn it off, or I am just going to stare at it. It's the so whole gorgeous. Show. It's such They're a, like, we don't, no one's ever asked us to turn it off. We don't know how to turn it off. Um, uh, we're going to do, so we're going to do an intermission a little bit in so we can go pee. That's the, that's and the truth. It's right now. Thanks, y'all. You've been great. <laughs> Uh, and then after that, we're going to do some audience questions, and uh, y'all know the rule for audience questions. No cool. There, there is now a second rule that we've added, which is ask for actual advice. Yeah, no, Please give us a question. Uh, no anecdotes. We it does, just doesn't give us much of a runway. We but, take your questions on this show and we turn them alchemy-like into wisdom. Let's we'll do receive, that damn thing. Let's do the. Damn let's get thing. dirty. Let's, let's get twist nasty. it. My husband and I have two cats that both use the toilet <laughs> in our house. No, you okay. don't. You, you sh- mean like use a toilet, not like go to the bathroom, because everybody's cat does that. Yeah, they use the actual literal toilet. In our house, we only have one toilet. That is something that you probably should have thought about before you taught the cats to use it. When we have guests over, we ask them to leave the toilet seat up and to flush if they see any pee or poop in there. Is that last part too gross? Yeah. I never thought of it before, but I realize it might be disgusting to ask some folks we have over to look for poop and flush it down. Is that weird? And that's from the Cats Can't Flush. Are you here? Are you, are you here? All right. I, everybody cheered all at oh, once. Oh, you're a hive mind. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. Great. <laughs> we, um, are, we are here. <laughs> I will say this. Uh, first off, is that I want to get into the cats shitting on the toilet because that's... Chef kiss. Primo. But um, I don't know that you need to give your guests special instructions for what to do if there's poop or pee in the toilet. Because it would be a fairly rowdy house guest who's like, huh, look at that. A bunch of dookie. Anyway. Like, presumably... Is that just what they do here? Cool. Cool. Okay. Well, let, allow me to join. <laughs> when in Rome, I suppose. How I'll, European. Here's my leavings. <laughs> Adios. Um, I think... That was really gross. I, I hated being on stage for that. Let, let me ask you this. What's weirder? Telling your guests, like, hey, we've trained our cats to use the toilet, so you might need to flush that after one. them. That's the or, weirdest possible. Or two, we keep a box full of dirt, <laughs> and it's just got poop in it all the time. We keep a box full of dirt that they poop in, and then, by the way, the dirt smells worse than the poop. Hey, cat litter manufacturers... Can you do something? It smells really bad already. That's the base state. There's never cat litter that's like, is somebody making fried chicken? Um, I think it would be so funny to see little poop in the toilet. It looks like David the Gnome got in there and wrecked your biz. I would love that. I would be so excited. I don't think I'd be able to flush it. I'd be too stoked. Aww. 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 Look at that little kitty did his no. biz. This, you know the bad part about seeing the kitty poop in the toilet? What? Is Just. that you know upon seeing it that you miss the cat shitting in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh man, he's not going to do it again tonight. Oh man. I can't believe you it. You think he sits there and reads a little kitty paper? Little kitty magazine. He's a big fan of Garfield. I can't understand the amount of work that goes into teaching a cat to do a person thing, <laughs> like using a toilet. And you can't go the final yard there the, the, to cross the 100-yard line into the touchdown area by forcing them to learn how to operate a very small lever. You did, you did the hard part, which was convincing a cat to pee where you wanted them to. Specifically, a big bowl, like a big thing. Oh. Like, 
how did you start that? Like, hey, cat, shit in this room wherever. And so they, I'll just narrow it down. To different places you get shit. The answer is the bowl. The, the, um, the, the question is, where does it stop? Because you can teach your cat to shit in the toilet, and then you can teach your cat to flush. And then, well, I guess you should teach a cat to wash its little paws. And then it's like... Taxes. Now, please Tax. go... Off to school. Please go get a job, I guess. Yeah. I had a joke, but you guys can go ahead and do yours <laughs> first. It's just these jokes, and this question is like... Meet the parents kind of already dug this one out for us, and I don't know that it's... And this is going to be funnier because they had a long time to sit in a room and figure out fun. Ben and Robbie De Niro got together and they're like, we got three weeks. Let's think of some really funny stuff to say. And we just have to say it right away. Do it immediately. It's not fair. Ben Steeler gets all the breaks. How about a Yahoo, though? I'd love that. Sorry, my eyes stopped opening there for a second. (laughs) The road, man. Uh, how about this one? It was sent in by Lauren McPherson. Thank you, Lauren. It's Yahoo Answers user. Cotton! That's really their name. Nice. Cotton asks, My beds smell bad? I tried everything I could, but the mattress still smelled bad. What can I do? Mattress smell bad. Oh, Mattress man. Bad. My bed smell bad. I tried everything. Shoot. My bed. I tried everything. Big washing machine. <laughs> Hose and soap. Bed smell bad still. Oh, wet washcloth. Hose Pine saw. Tricky car wash. <laughs> Risky candle. My bed smell bad. Risky candles in Risky the bed still bad. bad. Wish on star. <laughs> bed smell bad. Bed smell bad. Oh, man. Sometimes oh, man. you stay in a friend's guest room, and I just did this in Chicago, so this is not a read on them, but... <laughs> bed smell bad? Bed can smell bad. And, you know, the- it's great. Bed has sheet... Bed has pillow. Bed comfort is great. It sounds like you're leaving off a certain aspect about bed. Bed, bed smell bad? Yeah. And you know what? Bed doesn't spontaneously smell bad. No. Like a bed has never just started smelling bad for no reason. Bed smell bad a long time. Bed smell good forever, except human. Uh, Human makes bed bad. Smell bad. Smell bad, bad, human. Try bucket for Breeze. Wish on star. Uh huh. No good. Still stink dreams. Still stink dreams. <laughs> Extra incense. Mm hmm. Five, six. Bed smell bad. <laughs> what can we do about the bed smell bad, though? The bed smell. What was it? We, I think we've tapped it. <laughs> I think we've tapped it, right? There's no more. The meat. Bed, all the ways bed smell bad. Bed yeah, smell yeah, bad. Yeah, or those... better. Does anybody else have any ones they want to kick in? Because <laughs> bed smell bad. Bed smell bad. Tried everything. Try everything. Bed be- bed meat. So- well, people are now offering handy suggestions right, on how hell- to make the... Yeah, fuck Heloise. No, I just, we're just trying to do a comedy show up here. The bed smell bad. Uh, how about another question? That's, I don't care about this bed anymore. That's the end. <laughs> I fucking hate this bed now. Stupid bed. For the last couple of months, I've spent some of my downtime watching YouTube tutorials on how to do some car tricks. It was never serious interest, but something I could show friends after a couple of drinks. Okay, so... You've been learning how to do card tricks. Yeah. Let's just lay it out there. Let's put the tiger on you the table. You didn't accidentally learn card tricks. Right. right. I was watching them, and it turns out... Picked up a couple things watching Ugh. other people do card tricks on YouTube. Yeah, I know. One of my friends was so impressed, he decided to talk his boss into hiring me to perform at their company holiday party. <laughs> In a month, without my knowledge, I know about ten card tricks. With about three good ones. 
Oh, no. Do I take it on and risk embarrassing myself and my friend, or do I decline the chance to make some extra cash? That's from Maybe Magical in Minneapolis. Holy shit. Are you here? <laughs> that was the best, yeah. Two yeah, question ratio. It was a very Oh, shit. Thing. They just turned into a bunch of doves. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, fuck. It's just that, like, you gave yourself an out in the email, which I appreciate, because there's no amount of money you could pay me to go somewhere and do bad at magic I, in front of people. I do like, though, I didn't think about this when I was going through but now I'm thinking about it, hearing Justin read it out loud. You are considering doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the real problem, isn't it? Like, there's a part of you that's like, listen, I know how it's going to go, but it's money. <laughs> Just Matt, it's just card tricks. I feel like you could hire a plant or several. Yes. It's sort of like, was this your card? Yeah, it totally was. You did it. And then someone next to him, like, it was his card. (laughs) It was. He's he's not a plant. (laughs) This guy's not a plant. I came with this dude. (laughs) He works in HR. You know, everyone's plants. (laughs) Is every plan, single person except the, the boss <laughs> can you just take the money you were going to get for the show and give everybody like four dollars and just be like please be cool here's one consolation if it helps they can pay somebody to um, do card tricks at a party you can't pay me to watch card tricks at a party <laughs> so you there's a very good chance you could walk into a room and be like hey everybody I got something everyone can enjoy press the digitation bye 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 bye. There's p- there's punch. Goodbye. Also, I don't know what this business is, but your friend deserves a raise if he can sell. Hey, I saw my friend do a card trick so good. You should pay them to perform at our holiday party. That's a hard sell. That's tough. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Table, four chairs around it. Say this is a very intimate set. I do intimate close up magic. <laughs> and <laughs> keep saying the word intimate and over and saying, over again. Yeah, say intimate a lot. Then you're like, if I'm gonna get if if I'm gonna get everybody through my set, I can only do about three tricks. I'm sorry. I know many more. Great ones. <laughs> oh, so good. Even better than the ones I'm doing now. <laughs> Even better than the ones I'm doing now. But uh, these are my intimate set. <laughs> this is my three song intimate set that I can only do with four people. So then you just churn them through. So you don't have to keep it up for 15, 20, 30 minutes. It's just like five minutes of intimate close-up magic. Speaking of intimacy, one other thing (laughs) you could do is introduce some light stripping and erotica. (laughs) Like, you only need three tricks if each one is preceded by by 15 minutes of... 15 minutes of tasteful erotica. Yeah. Justin, yeah, is the erotica tied into the show? Like the pattern? oh yeah, we're talking about Ace of Clubs, Ace of Spades, both pasties. Like, is this your card? Doesn't even matter anymore. Is this is this your card? No, it's not. That's the Jack of Diamonds. I had the Three of Hearts. Oh, well, here's my butt. <laughs> Is it going to say, my card on your butt? No. Here's what I can guarantee you. If you introduce some light, tasteful erotica into your office party, no one afterwards will be commenting about how few tricks you knew. (laughs) That is a promise from me to you. Uh, You want a Yahoo? Sure. This one was sent in by Stefan Ruby. Thank you, Stefan. It's Yahoo Answers user Ned Racine. Oh, last name, too. Full oh, name. No. Thank you, Ned. It's, uh, Ned asks, invent new sport, bird fishing. <laughs> Just right out the bat, can I point out birding, then? Like... That's a different thing. A different that does thing not involve. I know, but you can't put fishing in there. Because, yeah, okay. sure. I'm going deer fishing. Do you mean? You mean hunting, right? Uh, just think of it. <sighs> mm. Hooking a tough old nasty crow on your line. <laughs> Having the bird take to the skies. Having the drag on your reel spewing out line. Fuck. Having more fun. Finishing. <laughs> Finishing. Completing. 
achieving. (laughs) Having more fun than flying a kite as the bird soars into the blue sky. You nasty Ned! You real nasty Ned. Finally, like fishing, do the catch and release. Sounds like a lot of fun. You could even invent special lures, etc. Great new sport. But what would be the open season? Would there be some species off limits? Give me your input, please. Yeah, Ned, I think there will be some species off limits. Yeah, Ned, there's already some species off limits, Ned. Did you kill this bald eagle? No, I did not, officer. I fished it. I fished fished it it out of the sky. Gonna eat it so it's good. (laughs) Now it's good and legal. Oh, Ned, (laughs) he got me again. Uh, uh, The problem I have with this, everything about it is great. (laughs) Agreed. And logical and good and right and pure. And, but the thing about birds are they're not smart animals, but if you as a bird see a worm in the sky, you are going to know something is up. Bird, bird in a, a worm in a lake. A fish thinks like, oh, it is not your lucky day. It fell in the lake. No swimmy. A chomp, chomp, chomp. Right. Unless. Unless. Bird sees a worm in the sky and thinks like, Look at that magic worm. <laughs> I'm not going to let this opportunity pass. I have to know what the magic worm tastes like. That's a very short-sighted worm, though, because if I was a bird, I would say, go, magic worm, make others like you <laughs> for future generations of birds You to make enjoy. my job so much easier, magic worm. Do you think that in bird fishing, you're like the bobber would be like a balloon? I think a balloon and a worm. And the like, worm, you couldn't just like throw it up in the air and hope that that second was when a bird went. Whoa. Travis, you're making this perilously close to a great achievable idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. The say, balloon really took me because, like, all credit to you, I was having a trouble with my mind's eye getting the worm up there. But right. of course, the balloon. Yeah. Excellent. No, excellent. I mean we're on some busy world of Richard Scary shit for sure. <laughs> no, listen, I don't support this. But with a few tweaks. Yeah, I don't support it, but I don't know how you can not support this and support fishing. Because in fishing, you're like, ha, 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 here's the water worm. At least this time you're giving this worm the best day ever, the most unbelievable story of all time. Yeah. But here's the problem, and I love that this person in this question is like, and then you catch and release the bird. I don't think that's how that's going to go. Yeah. You have plausible deniability when you catch and release a fish, because it's like, ah, I got him, but don't worry. I just put a hook through you, but you're free, splash, gone. And then you don't have to see it. You don't get that with a bird, unless it's very foggy outside, maybe. Right. Or you throw it very hard. And turn around real quick. That's Where'd why, you like, go? <laughs> with a fish, you can be like, ah, oh, did you get hooked on some sort of line? Allow me to help, little aquatic friend. So, so, I can't believe somebody did that to you. A bird watched you. A yeah. bird knows you. And also, a bird doesn't need to run and hide back in water to live. A bird's just going to chill there and maybe talk to you about yeah. what just happened. Hey, <laughs> hey what the fuck? What the, what fuck? the fuck? We, I was here for that whole thing. Yeah, I saw all of it. Do not invent new sport bird fishing. Don't. But if you do. But if you do. We the will, balloon is mine. We will ha- uh, happily be the announcers if you go pro. But it will just involve a lot of this. Oh, no. Oh, Oh, shit. Oh, Oh, God. Oh, that's horrible to watch. Oh, it's everywhere. (laughs) Farm wisdom. Farm wisdom. Get your friend Doug to spay bugs. Farm wisdom. That's right. Farm wisdom is back tonight only for our friends. I never. I didn't even tell. This is a surprise to them. I got a whole page here of farm fun facts that I looked up, and we're just going to talk about farms for a second. Y'all got farms in Minnesota? Oh, my God, you're all farmers. Well, shit. You all know this already. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is true. That thing you said. This is a very complete list with a lot of ups and downs. So (laughs) if something is not funny, we're just going to move on past it, okay? But you'll have learned something, and that's the important thing. Goats are great companions for other farm animals, including horses, cows, and chickens. 
That's a good hang. That's a good hang right there. Uh, also, home. not true. There are very few animals that will just ram shit. One mature ewe, a female sheep, produces seven to ten pounds of newly shorn wool a year, enough to make a man's suit. Presumably a very patient man. <laughs> Go ahead. No, it's fine. Prom's not for another seven months. I can wait. Just keep growing it. <laughs> Goats were the first animal to be domesticated, according to many historians. <laughs> oh, there's no way! According to some people who don't know shit, like, no way. Wasn't goats, trust me. Pigs are considered the fourth most intelligent animal after chimpanzees, dolphins, and elephants. Wait, what about humans? (laughs) We're not on the list. Didn't rank. Here's a good one. Ow! Cows can recognize their names. Fuck you. But though, though, they may not come when called. Okay. Honestly, list, fuck off. <laughs> Sometimes when I say my cow's name, it comes to me. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> How do you, okay, because the only way I can think that you, this is a fact is that you would say like, Steven, and the cow would turn and go, nah. Nah, nah, nah. 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 No, man. Maybe that's just not the cow's name. Whoa. It's got a proud cow name <laughs> that you don't even know about. <laughs> um, what if you just named all your cows cow? Right? That's It'd be very sick. efficient. Cow. Uh, when do you ever want just the one cow? Well, there's a time when you just want the one cow. <laughs> Slow cow. <laughs> um, oh, man. Uh, I gotta stop eating meat. <laughs> <laughs> this, this fact actually is, this is in sequence, and this fact actually comes at this point. Female sheep are called ewes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Could have used that earlier. Yeah. That was up the list. That was earlier. Cows have... That came like, oh shit, did I say it? Shit. Uh, I don't I'll know. add it in. I'm not going to scroll back up. Cows have a memory of about three years. <laughs> oh shit. So don't name your cow four years ago. <laughs> That's what it is. Cows have a memory of about three. So you could tell if three years have elapsed, but hey, do you remember me owing you any money? In, in 2014. No. Okay, excellent. How do you, how the fuck do you know that? Honestly. Especially, I have to say, about three years. About three years. Some are more forgetful than others. Goats are great swimmers. Goats are fantastic. Okay. <laughs> what cannot goats do? I don't know that I have a memory of three years. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> Yeah, now that I think about it, geese are faithful and they mate for life. And they mourn when their partner dies. Oh, it's shit. It's not so much a fact. It's just so like, yeah, hey. Kinda. And also, <laughs> devoid. No bummers, just No bummers. <laughs> Cows can sense a storm coming and will lie down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop, stop. That's it is so, time. We so need great. to peer review. Where is this list from, it's, Justin? It's just farm stuff. No, so, my buddy. I screenshotted it. I don't know. I don't have an internet connection anymore. Can I jump back to the geese are faithful thing? Yeah, and so then I'll jump back to the cows being like, ah, oh, storm coming later. <laughs> I think it's weird to say geese are faithful. All of them. You, you know get, there's nasty geese. Right, there's the geese out there who's like, listen, listen. When, the, when the other geese is away or whatever. I don't know. Oh, geese, whatever. But that idea of all ge- you know, geese will never, never. Listen, be when you're nasty. surrounded by so many of those long, elegant, beautiful, sexy, curved necks, it is hard not. And those necks they got, they can look. You know, all geese around. aren't swans, right? Like swans aren't geese. geese swans aren't, are swans. geese. Swans are. It doesn't matter. It's not really playing with me in the space a little bit. It feels like maybe right now. It's we have a room full of farmers here, Griffin. <laughs> it's true. Um, this room is farmers only. Um, Are you done with your fake list of farm at bullshit? This point, at this point, I do start to worry that um, the, question, the, the person who wrote this list started to take their love of goats and sort of delve into <laughs> fan fiction. Because the next fact on here is goats have rectangular pupils, allowing them to see well in the dark. I think that one's actually legit. That one's legit? No, yeah. they legit have rectangular pupils, but like the idea of I like, thought you were going to say, like, Jeremy is the best goat. <laughs> I love you, Jeremy. Fact, Jeremy's always there for me. 
Jeremy is also faithful, and he... Some wild goats can climb trees and can walk along a ledge not much wider than a tightrope. I like this one because that means at some point a human was watching a goat approach something terrible and said, eh, let's see where this goes. <laughs> you know, you never know. I don't know. Let's see how this shakes out. I also like, some wild goats can. Some can. Some can. Yeah. There's a wild goat, try a tree all day, nothing's how, doing. How will you know the difference? We, uh, there's one way to find out. <laughs> Not all goats can walk across thin ledges, but eventually, <laughs> all goats will be able to. Jeremy can fucking do it. <laughs> Jeremy, the best goat. Um, here is another question. Some friends and I are at my buddy's parents' house to stay for the weekend. Ooh, I like this present tense. Uh, yeah. I've never been here or met his parents before. It was a road trip away, and 15 minutes after arriving, I went upstairs to use their luxury rainhead shower. Got that road stink on you. Nice. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, the handle was only meant to turn 90 degrees. I proceeded to turn it 180 in one swift motion, ripping it off the wall. <laughs> Currently, I'm naked and damp, and the shower won't turn off? <sighs> More party guests will be arriving within the hour. This is socially awkward DEFCON 1. What do I do? And this person has literally just written Derek Brown from Osseo, Minnesota. So just like, don't even question it. Derek, someone, okay, I'm assuming Derek Derek's cannot, not here. cannot be here. Derek Someone's cannot be here. Someone's parents just heard that and were like, wait, what? What? I oh, thought, shit. He said it was the dog. Derek, are you here? He made okay, it out. Wait, okay. Okay. Oh, uh, shit. There's so many elements at play here. Um, you could play it off just like, you've got a cool new water feature now. <laughs> it's upstairs and inside. And, and forever. And forever. <laughs> So it just takes the water through the drain and then recycles it back up to the... No, the sh- utilities no. are... Oh, <laughs> you would not believe. Also, there's no hot water anywhere else in the house. How strong are you? You very strong, Derek? He's so strong. <laughs> Too strong. <laughs> that was the... That was the, the... Sorry, weakest delivery of the sentence. I'm so strong. I've ever, usually it's, I'm so strong. I am no. I am very strong. Because right now Derek knows that there is only shame in that strength. Yeah. This is the moment where Hercules just can't control the power and knocks over all the columns. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's not like boom. You know. <laughs> this is sat. Can I ask you something, Derek? And you don't have to. Wait, answer. listen. Can we get Derek a mic? We have a crowd mic, or you can come down. Oh, he's here. up in the. I think he's in the balcony. Wait, wait, Derek. Are you in the balcony or are you on the ground floor? Okay. Down here. If we could get Derek, we have a crowd microphone, or you can come down here and you can just talk into mine, whatever. Derek, where are you, friend? Because I got it. We could, we, could yeah. van- we could talk about whatever garbage we want to, but honestly, we do need to know how this actually shook out. Okay. Hey, Derek. Derek, my first, my first question for you is this. Yeah. How long did you stand there with the handle in your hand? Was, That's actually a very good question. And how long was your... Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Fudge. <laughs> See, to be honest, I thought it had been hours as I was standing there, but it was probably just Keep the like, mic close to your mouth, Derek. I have to hear every single thing. But not syllable. too close. You'll ram it through <laughs> please, your face with please, your incredible there we go. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, we have so many suggestions of how it you was, could have done it better, but I do want to know how this played out so badly. It was, <laughs> it was I stood there long enough that I knew that people were going to start wondering, wow, he's taking a shower for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Which has How other sort of sinister, that? which has other sinister Correct, correct. <laughs> yeah, so, just lean at that walk I was waiting, so and the I, handle <laughs> fell off. <laughs> well, so I, well, and the worst part is my friend had, another friend had taken a shower before me and apparently figured it out. I guess it was fine. So hey, it bud, it doesn't me. sound like a real hard, it's not a jigsaw <laughs> puzzle, my dude. Right. How to not apparently, break the shower is... <laughs> Not a tough one. How did so you I, fucking cloak your shit, Derek? I don't know. Well, I, I FaceTimed my girlfriend, and she yes. was like... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> and she what? Was, she What's was the like, second half of that? She was that? like, she was like, why are you in the shower? And I was like, there's no time. Yeah. <laughs> I need help. 
So how did you and get she, out of the situation? You faced down your girlfriend and jumped through the she phone? Was like, she was like, just go downstairs and explain, and they'll understand. I was like, are you a crazy person? Yeah, yeah. that's obviously not any sort of solution. No, that's te- not it. <laughs> I texted my other friend downstairs. Who's and a plumber. What, <laughs> what went out? A plumber. There's a, a plumber. plumber. Your friend's oh, a plumber. Yeah. That's the only right answer. He, he turned. He figured out how to turn off the water. Well, that's something. anticlimactic. <laughs> uh, and his apparently the bathroom was like his mom's like sanctuary area, and I she's never now it's gonna got a forgive waterfall. me. <laughs> Enjoy your relaxation, Deborah. Correct. <laughs> I made it steamy permanently in there. Forever. Forever. Uh, so did you ever admit to it, or did you figure out a way to reaffix the handle? I, I tried to fix the handle, and it didn't work, and I shamefully admitted to it. And now are you and your friend's mom, like, best friends? I don't know about best friends. Right. Was she angry at you? She wasn't. You didn't do it on purpose. Derek, Derek I, mean, I don't she... want to lie here. How did Deborah react to you breaking the shower? <laughs> she was... She said it was okay, but it wasn't okay. Okay, yeah. yes, yeah, that's correct. Everybody, big hand for Derek, everyone. Well, folks, one we- time, one time, one time we were in Florida and we were staying with our uncle Dave, and Uncle Dave was psyched about the new screen doors he had in his Florida house. And Keep that in mind. I've probably told this story on the podcast before, but I saw a golf cart in his driveway and I got real excited. Also, the video game Grand Theft Auto Three had just come out. I saw the golf cart, and I yelled, Grand Theft Auto! I jumped through the screen door. <laughs> and Not on Uncle, purpose. It wasn't like Griffin saw the screen door and thought, I'm going to jump through that. No, I saw the golf cart, and I thought, Grand Theft Auto! <laughs> I jumped through it, and my Uncle Dave said it was okay, but it was not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, we are going to take a break, during which time you can go relieve yourself, go refresh yourself. That's what we're going to do, straight up. Go to purchase there's posters. Poster, yeah, there's posters out in the lobby. Made by park. Steven Sugar. It's they're fucking beautiful yeah, and wonderful, really and we love them so uh, much. So go buy those and uh, get your questions ready, and please have real questions, and we love you very much, and we will see you in a few minutes. We love you. Goodbye. Hey, everybody. This is Griffin McAvoy, sweet baby brother. Thank you so much for listening to our live show. This was our, our show for Minneapolis from the Midwest tour that we just got back from yesterday. Uh, sorry for the late episode. We were all traveling yesterday. And so here it is today. Uh, if you came out to these shows, thank you so much. We had a lot of fun, uh, except for the part where, our, well, I'm about to do a stunt in the second half of this show. So if you hear a bit where everybody starts laughing at me for no reason, it's because of the very cool and very brave stunt. Uh, anyway, I'm going to tell you about some of our advertisers and then let you get back to the rest of the show. Our first advertiser is Casper. Casper is a sleep brand that continues to revolutionize its line of products to create an exceptionally comfortable sleep experience one night at a time. They offer affordable prices because Casper cuts out the middleman, sells directly to the customer. Uh, we have a Casper mattress in our guest room and nursery, and it is really, really comfortable. I've slept on it a few times, and uh, when whenever we've had guests over who've slept in the bed, we get rave reviews. Four stars out of four. That's a 100% perfect score. Anyway, Casper brand mattresses combine multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with the right amount of both sink and bounce. You can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep on it trial. Start sleeping ahead of the curve with Casper. Get $50 towards any mattress purchase by going to casper.com slash mybrother and using promo code mybrother at checkout. Terms and conditions, they do apply. I also want to tell you about Lyft. That's L-Y-F-T, the ride-sharing service. Lyft drivers can earn hundreds of dollars a week plus tips. In fact, Lyft was the first rideshare program with tipping built right into the app. And as a driver, you keep 100% of the tips. And happy drivers means happy passengers. You can join the ride-sharing company that believes in treating its people better. If you Just go to lyft.com slash brother today, and you can also get a $500 new driver bonus. That's lyft.com slash brother. One last time, lyft.com slash brother. Limited time only. Terms, they also apply here. I have a Jumbotron message. This one is for future Justin, and it's from past Justin, who says, Dear future Justin, congrats on getting the hell out of the Navy. I hope you aren't wasting it with that dank kush and video games. 
I hope you are. Uh, get out there and do some good for this world. P.S. I bet I bet you wish you had these 100 smackers right now, don't you? Too bad. You should have talked me out of it. Suck it. Past Justin. I don't know if this is our first jumbo trying to feature a, a, a prominent suck it and a self suck it too, which is which is impressive. Uh, but yeah, hey, current present Justin, get out there and be the be the change. I think here's another jumbotron message. This one is for band, spelled B E R N D. There's some helpful pronunciation tips here, uh, as well as the information that he's Austrian. So. Uh, and that that helpful tidbit comes from Amanda, who says, pretend for a second this is the Adventure Zone, where it would be more fitting for me to commemorate and thank you for our many adventures together, from pillow fort snuggles to exercising you in the park. To exercising you in the park? Do you mean doing exercise or to get a demon? Anyway, uh, to not dying on your motorcycle. Smell you later! Or ideally sooner, maybe on my side of the pond this time. That is a very sweet message, and I'm sorry you couldn't get an Adventure Zone. It's a very competitive market right now, and with the economy the way it is, something, 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 the economy. I think that's it. We sure do appreciate you listening to the episode. Uh, We are going to try really hard to get a new episode recorded for next Monday so we don't do two live shows back-to-back again. But with the holiday this weekend and folks are traveling, uh, I'm not 100% on that, but we're going to try really, really hard uh, to, to get a new episode for you next Monday. Um, I think that's it. Oh, so when we come back after the, uh, the, the promo for our, our fellow Max Fun podcast here uh, after the break, uh, we lost a little bit of the recording, but we are just going to jump right into the middle of a, spoiler alert, a haunted doll watch. And it's a very good haunted doll watch, and we hope you enjoy it. And we'll talk to you next Monday. Bye. I'm Biz. And I'm Teresa. And we host the weekly comedy podcast, One Bad Mother. We celebrate our moments of parenting genius. As well as our failures. Just like, we're yeah. going to have hot dogs. And I'm yeah. like, oh, no, we're having fun. Everybody loves hot dogs. Yeah. And it just like smashes that thing right on my chest. And then I'm just uh, crying in the middle of like kid space yeah. while people are like literally dancing with their children. Parenting can be sad and painfully funny at the same time. So join us each week as we admit that this is hard, but we're getting really good at it. Find us at Max. MaximumFun.org or wherever you download podcasts. How tall is the doll again, Juice and Inches? 48 inches. That's a lot of inches. Holy shit. Okay. It's a lot of doll. She's from the 1800s. Uncertain of exact year. She sustained a foot injury from a bad fall. (laughs) Your doll broke. It it wasn't injured. Wait, no, this is important. When they say from the 18th century... The doll. The doll of the ghost? I don't know. Her foot remained broken, and it is the same to this day. So, translation, the doll's foot did break, and I did not fix it. (laughs) You cannot notice due to her beautiful, long Victorian dress. Oh, I'll notice. The doll's foot is broken. I didn't fix it, but you won't notice. But it's cool. You're not going to bring this on. You're not going to bring this on Haunted Antiques Roadshow, and they're going to miss the foot. I always suggest leave a vessel as is, for there's a reason, and you'll You're upset lazy. her. You're lazy. Well, You're lazy. here's the thing. The, my worry is with the broken foot, the ghost is just going to leak out the bottom. Uh-huh. <laughs> you can hear her roam the hall and hear her drag her foot. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You're just le- you're, now you're building it into the character, and you know what? It's better because they're <laughs> it's it's to be even better than it. other ones. I broke it on purpose. <laughs> she may enter your bedroom at night and touch your face. <laughs> okay, what's great about this is y'all reacted. She won't. She won't. It's a doll. She but may, she, y'all were like, well, now, no, she, no, she, up till now, she, she might. It gets better. <laughs> She may enter your bedroom at night. Touch your face. It will feel like a spider web. (laughs) (laughs) Is that better or worse than it feeling like a haunted small porcelain hand? It will feel like a spider web. Also, in what way? Um, Very lightly, because she is captivated by human life form. (laughs) It's a wild way of phrasing that. That's why she is just her going, fix my foot, (laughs) please. She she has such great beauty. She could have any man she wanted and was lucky with love. Hold on. (laughs) Let me read this entire sentence because you're going to be very tempted to get in here. Please let me read the entire sentence. Okay. Sit back. 
Her witchy ways, her beautiful eyes, her hair, clothing, jewelry, and her body, lifelike. She is a designer doll and has real-looking breasts. (laughs) Oh, no! I have never owned a vessel or doll that looked like this, meaning real. She is shown on the Victorian couch in the same old house I found her and where I heard her cries I to be I can't believe there's more! Her clothing alone is very expensive. Also to mention, her true-to-life look and build. She is a true companion. We get it! We get it. It's a fucking thing. It's a fuck thing. You want to fuck we the ghost doll. We fucking get it! We get it. Have I made it clear? Exquisite. <laughs> this is one of three that I have and decided to let her go to another good home. That's a cool house you have. What a cool, enjoyable house you have to live in. She has many talents and can help you with most anything. They're not fucking automatons. You don't get one of these fucking things for sweeping, right? Do you think at this point, like, his wife walked in like, what are you typing? Like, I'm selling you, dear. (laughs) She is very active. Once again, I warn you. Once you look into her Very eyes. Very sexy. I gotta warn so you. Sexy. Once you look into her eyes, you will be captured by her beauty. She is breathtaking. I know once you see her, you will want her. Holy shit. If she is meant for you, she will stay in your mind, and perhaps she will enter your dreams, and you will not get her off your mind, man or woman. Well, I feel like we... Okay. I feel like we started a bit at the beginning of this read, and this person heard us do that... <laughs> And they decided to yes and, however many weeks ago, yes and us with their doll. I I just hope that three brothers read this listing. Once again, she is true to size. A four foot per, I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah, sure. Beautiful clothing, glass eyes, beautiful jewelry, made of porcelain, vintage. Just like a human being, real clothing, glass eyes. (laughs) Glass eyes, beautiful jewelry, made of porcelain, vintage. And her defective foot, you cannot see it. (laughs) That's what it says. Made of porcelain vintage and her defective foot, but you cannot see it. You will not notice her foot, but you will notice her breasts. Her Her breasts. God in heaven. She is one of a kind, for sure. Well, she's one of three, it sounds like. (laughs) The other two's feet ain't breaking. Um, Whoa, that sentence was bad. I want you to really listen to me for this next paragraph, okay? Really listen. I can't, no, Justin. Just listen. It's the end, but I want you to, like, really think about it. She is one of a kind, for sure. Ask yourself, do you want her? Do you need her? Do you want love? Only you will know. She is sold as is and beautiful. <laughs> so that's the Haunted Doll Watch for this week. We we can never do this bit again. <laughs> you all may have just heard the last haunted doll watch. What a momentous occasion. I, I can't imagine a doll watch better than listen, this doll's super haunted and super stacked. <laughs> and check it. Check yeah. it. Can you I won't you? even notice the foot. <laughs> can I tell you the terrible truth? I read the first paragraph of that and thought, yeah, it seems good. <laughs> it's a Babe Ruth Yay! called shot, point at the outfield. Okay. Uh, all right, we're going to start picking people for this part. Please stay in your seats and uh, if, uh, be cool. And uh, If you could lower us, like our light's about 30% so we can see and bring those house lights just, just way, all the way up. Because it's real hard to find people sometimes. Yeah. Just uh, give me a full house. Okay. God, there are like There's a, a fuck lot ton of people you. here. Oh, uh, if we could get even more house and less us. It would help us, because right now I just see sort of a bunch of overcast I know that you are not normally tasked with illuminating the audience. (laughs) That's not really what the lights are built for. Um, Okay, um, um, this um, person here with, I think it's a green long sleeve shirt. It looks like, yeah, and yeah. You? Where should that, sorry, where are the microphones? Where should they go to once they? Uh, There's one on the right, one on the left. Uh, Okay, over on this side... Uh, there's somebody with a white uh, short sleeve shirt that's bouncing up and down, and you're celebrating. You're standing. Yes, yes, you. Yes, you. You just stood up yeah, and you celebrated. Just stood up and sat down. 
Remember, you really, everybody really has oh, questions, right? right? Yeah, on, right yeah. there. Go to the microphone. Oh, you're worrying me already. Okay. Hi, you what? seem like you also have already begun the question. Here are the, the rules. Um, we're going to hear your name and hear your question. And it's going to be a question that we can help with. Remember, Not just a funny story that ends with This is your I last good. chance to sit down. And uh, uh, we will choose the one that we can help the most. Not the best anecdote about... Whatever, just the one we can help the most. Okay. And, and also, if we don't pick yours, it doesn't mean your question wasn't good. That's no. Right. It just means that we can't help you because we're dingus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's start over here. Hi, what's your name? Uh, hi, my name's Ryan. Hi, hi Ryan. Ryan. What's your question, Ryan? Uh, so my dad won't stop uh, texting me animated GIFs and then asking me for my feedback in person. <laughs> <laughs> huh. And I, and I don't know what to say to him. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's... That one's very simple, but so relatable. Uh, that's very good. Uh, what is... Uh, is that... That's the end of the, Okay, that's the end of the question. What's your name and your question? Danielle. Oh, Hi, Danielle. God, sorry. Yeah, it amplifies it. Yeah. It shoots it all over this it big makes room. It even louder. Yeah. Uh, what is your question, Danielle? Um, I work in an ice restaurant and... Uh... In an ice restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> a nice restaurant. Nice and restaurant. For okay. birthdays, we don't really do anything besides stick a candle in the desserts. But sometimes, I'm asked to sing because I am studying to be a professional singer. Okay. Uh, Shit. So, <laughs> so sometimes I sing for a guest, but sometimes it's during rush and the entire floor gets quiet, and then the next guest uh. wants me to sing Happy Birthday too. So how do I uh. stop the chain of snowballing Happy uh. Birthdays? I love Listen, y'all, both your lives are ruined. (laughs) We're going to be sorting through rubble either way. (laughs) Damn, these are both really good. Yeah, both really good. Let's, uh, can we help out? We can help out. Uh, Because I think we can help you very uh, fast. Very fast. (laughs) I don't actually, I was hoping you (laughs) could. No, I... (laughs) I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're if you're listening at home <laughs> If you're listening at home I just did a, a finishing vi- joke to Griffin. A very big B got on the stage. And went for my beloved brother Travis. Just deathly allergic. I fought the bee and I won. But I f- farted while I was doing it. And that's why right, everybody laughed very big. Griffin fell. Shit. <laughs> Griffin fell slowly and of his own accord. Okay. Okay. Paul, Griffin, earlier, then- Paul, earlier you offered me ibuprofen backstage. I would love some. Right now. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I think what you... I bought you two dipshits a lot of time to think of a good answer. (laughs) So, Dad texts you a gift. You then, when you see him next, I want you, unprompted, to pull out a legal pad that you have seven pages of notes upon. And I want you to go beat by beat, methodically, and go, and another thing I think you could do better with your gifts. <laughs> and really get in there. Tell, I, tell your dad he's ready for Tumblr. Say, these, <laughs> these are great gifts, and I'm ready for you to start Tumblr. Then get the link to the Tumblr. Then send me the link to enjoy your dad's gifts. I hope that helps you very much. Thank you. Fucking ibuprofen, Paul. Let's party! Damn, this is our fucking behind the music. Griffin. Things went bad for Griffin. Started Things using, already went bad for Griffin. Started when using he fought drug. the big B. He found his vertigo unable to control. He turned to using drugs on stage. So, <laughs> people make you <laughs> sing. Um, can you get some sort of hose peripheral that you just put right up here and then lead directly to their mouth, their ear, or their mouth. Yeah. 
like and feed like them cake like a mama bird. Okay. I would do the if Mariah Carey would sing into a hose into my mouth and then make it sing like I was singing her beautiful voice. My head's not going to work good no. for the rest of the. Um, I actually I miss because I, I see this in movies all the time and TV shows and I've never seen it happen in real life like the piano just in the middle of the thing and like a singer who just like. Not like a band that performs, but just like, that's what this restaurant is, and everyone's there apparently to see this happen. So I say you just lean into it, and you're just like, this happy birthday song Full is for singer, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Full-blown La La Land. Uh, uh, no, that but, sucks. But the song I sing is only happy birthday. Well, does it have to you're be? You're going to have to do your, your own spin on it, right? Where you just like okay. make it really long, because that's what people love. When the birthday song goes on forever and people are like, yeah, more, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slower. Sing the secret second verse oh, of the happy so like, birthday song. <laughs> all the extra stuff with like Scooby-Doo and all oh, that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and more. Mm-hmm. But make it last like seven minutes long. Nobody will want to hear that again. I Ooh, I've like. got it. Start offering people a choice. They can have a free dessert or the song, but not both. Oh, you'll, oh. you'll never have to sing can the song. Can you get some... Can you get someone to come out and, like, put a cape on you after, like, James Brown used to? Like, no, she can't sing she can't. anymore. <laughs> Listen, you heard it. She, we put the cape on. It's over. That's the end of it. We need that, by the way. I would love that. <laughs> or a neck brace. <laughs> Did we help? Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> Whew. All right. Uh, let's go more middle this time. Uh, somebody has a, a top hat over here. Sorry, this, this top hat. Uh, the fact that multiple people applauded for the top hat is like, what's up, my brother, my brother, right. and listeners? Go left. Go, yeah, or stage left. Okay, right here. You're this wearing, way, this way, this way. This, yeah, you got it. Right. right here, you're wearing glasses. You appear to have a blue shirt that perhaps is denim. And maybe, yes, please stand up. Yes, it's you. Yes, come on down. All right, your stage right. You're wearing glasses. That was the worst injury we sustained during a live Easily show before, top right? top five, All right. at the very least. Uh, oh, oh, shit. shit. <laughs> nice. That's not just any top hat. Your cosplaying is Griffin from episode two of My Brother, My Brother and Me. Now available on VRV.com. VRV.co. All oh. six episodes available. That fucking rules. It's really good. Uh, what, what is your name? My name is Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi, Anna. Hi. And Anna, what is your question? Uh, I work at a job that I hate, and I want to quit, but I can't get my vacation benefits until I hit a year, and that's six weeks away. Okay. And my boss, I think, senses this, and is trying to, like, get me to quit before then by being like, you seem really unhappy, so how do I beat her? <laughs> I love that. We don't get the adversarial ones enough. That's awesome, Anna. Thank you. Uh, what is your name? I'm Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. Um, Who are you trying to thwart? <laughs> uh, security here. No, <laughs> um, no, we have... My boyfriend got us uh, season tickets to the Broadway shows that come here. Okay. Um, and our seats are actually where we're sitting tonight, which is convenient, because my question is, what is the best way to hide snacks here for when Shit. we come to the show? Yes. In the I, chandelier. Hypothetically, to. <laughs> if you want to hypothetically. I want to do that one just so I can reference heavyweights a lot. <laughs> Anna, thank you so much. I don't think we can help you enough. Just like, you. just like chill. That one's easy though. Just like chill. Just chill and don't get fired, Anna. You can do it. Every big hand for I'll Anna. I'll play out with Outlast. Right, so your first order of business is going to be disguised because you have been spotted by yeah. the theater officials. <laughs> they have your name. I'm looking. Yes, they're putting your picture on yeah. a bulletin board. Right. Listen, the first obvious choice is going to be like slid open the seat so the candy. Don't, 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 don't. This is don't. a mistake, but don't. This is a do mistake that. for a lot of reasons. A lot first of people. All, you're gonna put your butt on your food. Like this is not great. <laughs> but also, there's a lovely theater instructor. <laughs> Maybe just like tape it to the bottom of the seat. I know that's pretty easy, but 
Is that cool? I'm, I'm looking, looking at, at some security. I'm looking around at the security. Cool? Do y'all check for it? No, no, they're no, shaking. No, their I'm head. Gonna, no, I'm going to make you shake your head. No. All right, but serious question security forces. Do y'all actually check for that? Get a shaking head? Yes. They're shaking yes, head? Yes. Wow, a thorough team. That's excellent. What don't you check for? Yeah. If you can just get. I almost fell over again. Oh, hell no. Now it's real. Now there's nothing holding up your back. Right, but my instinct won't be to lean back anymore. Uh, can you give Katie some sort of, like, pass, some sort of snack, all-you-can-eat snack pass? How much would they have to bribe you before you let them bring in Bribery! Bribery! Yeah. Okay. Okay, but, like, one snack for you, one snack for them kind of thing. You know what I mean? Would that like, work? Oh. No, I'm seeing a shaking head no with Ken. That's another no. What's a no. snack you haven't had since like, you were a kid that if they brought you back? A Mars bar? Holy shit. You're, I don't know why I'm focusing on just you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, I mean, could you borrow their top hat? Because that's just a lot of snack potential. You could get four summer sausages up in that thing. <laughs> Just four. I mean, maybe more summer sausages, depending. I mean, if you go full Jamiroquai, we're talking about eight to nine summer sausages. Did what, that? What you need to do is tape the snacks now to the seats now, but don't eat them now. Later, pick them up so they're already there waiting for you. Your seats yeah. are saved, right? Yeah. Just magnet them to there like people do with the car keys. And can I recommend now and later? <laughs> Perhaps a now and later or something non perishable along yeah. those lines. Or maybe, like, tape them to your body, you know? Like, I, I don't think that there's a good retrieval path for that. That is in true. In the minute, do you hear the people say something? <laughs> does, that, does that help? Uh, we'll see in two weeks when we come back. For the I guess okay. so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to turn my chair back around now because this is deeply uncomfortable. Could you convince them that it's a Rocky Horror kind of thing? Like, every time we see songs for a new world, we throw raisinets at this one part, so I gotta bring them in? And I bet Zagari would be like, oh, then cool. Oh, fine. We love when you throw stuff at the stage. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, let's go. Remember, you really, you, everybody's doing good so far. Let's keep the streak alive. There's a person with a red toboggan uh, pointing at somebody else. Uh, yeah, you like, uh, I don't know, like 10 rows back. Yeah, you just took your toboggan off, and now you're pointing at somebody. Yeah, and now you're pointing at yourself. That pointing at yourself. We're, uh, there we go. This is the most You are stage left, and then on the right side. Uh, I, okay, right there, I think you have on a pink pink shirt and you have like long yeah you just turned your head to look behind yes you yes you you're pointing at your own face we should have started with you already 30 seconds ago sorry what's your name uh, my name is Becky hi Becky, Becky. Becky. Um, my question is if you could give me advice on good topic starters when I'm meeting new people because I was told the ones I do are inappropriate well I gotta hear well <laughs> well no, hold those hostage. Don't tell us. Don't tell okay. us. Okay. Give us me a sneak preview of their viability for a podcast um, that people listen to. I misunderstood what a, goes into a prostate exam. <laughs> all right, Stop. all right, Perfect. all right, all right. <laughs> I think we're going to get along great. <laughs> what is your name? Uh, Violet. Violet, hi. Get right up on that mic, Violet. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what is your question, Violet? Um, so I got a new roommate this year, and it's fine, but she has a lot of cups and mugs and assorted <laughs> um, drinking devices. Like, I counted. It's about 30. It takes up... <laughs> Can we bring Violet's mic up just a little bit? Because I need to hear a lot more about cups and mugs. Um, <laughs> it takes up two of our shelves in the cabinet. I only own two mugs, and they don't... They barely fit. Yeah. Um... What do I do to these mugs? <laughs> How should I get rid of her cups? Or okay, all right. I love that one very much. Real quick, how do you think a prostate exam works? <laughs> and then we're gonna we're gonna do a deep dive on the mugs. Um, do you do you know the phrase? I hope he has small hands. Okay. Uh, yeah. I presume that because they're talking about the whole hand. The oh whole my hand god! Oh god! Like like a. A Muppet scenario? Yeah. Okay. 
thank you very much. You're a wonderful person, and I'm glad you're on Earth. <laughs> they, they, they have to check the weight of the prostate. <laughs> and, and, the fr- and the ripeness. <laughs> Not uh, ready yet. Okay, so... My first question is, why do you still own two mugs? Because it sounds like you're good. <laughs> sounds well, like you could probably get rid of those pretty easily to that's start all with. I need. How novel but are the mugs? Yeah, is it like a my no- mugs mug or collection? Her mugs? What's it? Uh, Whose I, mugs? They're, they're mugs. If they have thirty mugs, they must love. All, there's a story behind each one. No, I think she just picked them up at yard sales, and then the rest are like Facebook mom quotes about coffee. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Fuck. boy. Um, okay, are there any that are duplicates that she has more than one of? No. God damn it. All original. What if... Because those were... I was going to shatter those. You were going to shatter those. You know what? Here's the problem. They're all on, like, in one space on two shelves. Yes. Two mugs spread throughout the kit. Just mugs everywhere, but just enough that if someone looks in one cabinet, they're like, that's an appropriate amount of mugs. <laughs> Unless they open all your cabinets right in your house, at which point they're robbing you, and then some mugs are going to go away, and you're fine. <laughs> oh, say you got robbed! <laughs> yeah, that'll get you out a lot of roommate pickles. Uh, I mean, you could spend a whole day smashing 30 mugs. <laughs> or you could just smash the one coffee maker. <laughs> well, because, I don't need these of, anymore. Because of an advertiser that pulled out of your favorite conservative <laughs> news talk show. Um, Topical. Would we use this episode in February? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fuck are they even talking about? <laughs> um, what did Mr. Coffee do now? <laughs> um... Sometimes I, I like to store bacon grease in a mug because if you pour it down the drain, it'll clog the drain. So maybe you could just start cooking a lot of bacon. You can also then later use it for, gra- like for making gravy. It's not perfect just- for making gravy. Or if you want to take some out and put it... Hey, Thanksgiving tip. Thanksgiving's coming up. Maybe you put a little bacon grease on the skin. That's real nice. You're going to like that a lot. It's not, not a joke. Not especially funny is the only problem. Not a joke. It's just something you should try this Thanksgiving. Can you form it? Nobody's into... laughing because they're typing it into Evernote right now. Like, do not forget. Can you make a... a mug friend out of all these mugs named Mugsy? And you can't take Mugsy apart. I love Mugsy. <laughs> and it won't be on your shelves anymore. Be in your living room filling up a whole chair. And you can play games with Muggsy and watch television with your new best friend, Muggsy. What video game would you play with Muggsy? Bubs, Bubsy. <laughs> My shit, Cuphead would have been That's what I was good. going yeah. for. God damn okay. it. Here's the thing. One of the things you... Oh, what? I love Muggsy, though. When? Are you going to play with Muggsy or are you going to do a different <laughs> joke? <laughs> When my daughter makes slime, she only likes to make it. She doesn't like to play with it. So I'll take it and I'll put it in what I like to think of as slime purgatory. So it's hidden on a shelf. And if she notices in three days, then she gets it back. If she doesn't notice, it's straight in the trash. So try that with mugs. So you just take one mug and hide it. And if she doesn't notice that one, then you throw it in the trash. And you just keep repeating that. Eventually she's like, I could have fucking sworn I own 30 mugs. Why do I own six? Unless... Unless. Unless she likes to put them all on the floor, jump into them like a Scrooge McDuck. Are you okay? <laughs> I think I think when my vertebra, the one that carries coherent thoughts from my brain to the rest of my body, has dissolved. Did we help? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and thank you really to you. Really think about Muggsy, though. Really think about Muggsy. There's a lot of meat on them bugs. Thank you to the Orpheum for uh, having us here. We're going to wrap up wrap here. Up. bring so the lights down. Justin lights doesn't down just audience. start thanking people in the middle of He's a very grateful dude. Yeah, you can bring the house lights down. Thank you so much. And bring ours, like, way back up. <laughs> so it can just be the shining, glittering See stars. See us. Um, uh, thank you to you all so much for coming and this has been so fun and Minneapolis you are like the literal best and we love you so much thank you 
You've been so kind to us, and uh, this has been super duper fun. And thank we- you to uh, CAA for helping us book the show, and thank you to Paul for giving me the message right, earlier. Hand for Paul, check out the music of Paul and Storm. And you can uh, you can sail away with Paul and Travis and Dad on the Joko cruise. If you want to and do that. other people and other people. Yeah. It's not just the three of them on a boat they stole. JokoCruise.com. Go check it totally uh, out. Thank you to our dad for doing our intro for us. And that is. Uh, uh, thank you to AEG and the Orpheum. The Orpheum, yeah, the Orpheum play series. Right? Thank you to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album, Putting the Days to Bed. Now, go check out all the other amazing shows at MaximumFun.org. Um, if you haven't gotten a poster yet, get yourself one of them. Steve, yeah, they're great. Um, now, the way this show normally wraps up is Griffin reads a Yahoo answer, and then we think about it, and then we come back to it next week and answer, uh, provide our answers to it. So... Griffin, do you have one more Yahoo? I do. Okay. Let's go ahead and hear that. I've got an ice cube I'm working through right now. <laughs> I'm worried about our brother. This one sent in by Level 9000. Yeah, Drew, Drew, Drew Davenport. Thank you, Drew. <laughs> it's from Anonymous. The secret hacker organization asks in one collective booming voice. A psychic told me I had a connection to cats and a cat planet. It started with a T, but I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This is my brother, my brother, me, kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hey everyone, Freddie Wong, Matt Arnold, and Will Campos. Here to tell you about Story Break, a writer's room podcast where every week we, the Hollywood geniuses behind Video Game High School, have one hour to turn a humble idea into an awesome movie. Thrill as we weave the tragic tale of Jar Jar, a Star Wars story. We're going to double down on everything that made the prequels great. Jar Jar, (laughs) trade (laughs) federation, politics. Gasp as we assemble a pantheon of heroes for the Kellogg Cinematic Universe. We could get rid of Snap, Crackle, Pop. I wouldn't even miss them. You're crazy. They die in the second. Oh, come on. (laughs) And join us as we make fun of Matt as he struggles to name a single Beyonce song. Well, yeah, put a finger on it. Sure, she wants to be Beyonce. Put a Um, finger on it. Beyonce's (laughs) famous song. Will we break the story? Or will the story break us? Find out by joining us in the writer's room every Thursday on MaximumFun.org or wherever you get your podcasts.